Okay, we are here at Intel Forecast 2012. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE for a special theCUBE SiliconANGLE conversation with Ben Kepps. Thanks for coming by and, and sharing your uh, opinions with us. We had dinner last night and uh, we were talking about a lot of things, but uh, we, I wanted to talk to you about the, uh, the uh, business of cloud. Um, cloud is hot right now. I was just talking with James out in the hallway uh, from Instratus. We saw George last night from those guys. and. Their, their pipeline is pretty massive. They got huge customer base building, huge demand for consultancy right now, which is advice. Sure. How do I do stuff? So we were talking last night, technology conversation or business conversation? A little bit of both. So what's your perspective on that? Yeah, the interesting thing is that, you know, in, in terms of, you know, you, you called out as and Stratus, and I use them as an example as well, because they're doing something really that, um, that, that every large legacy vendor should be doing, but, almost every large legacy vendor has difficulty doing. Uh, because, you know, there's still all this stuff trying to kind of discount the cloud as a, as a delivery mechanism. Uh, whereas in Stratus have, have, have jumped in boots and all, um, and, so, and so they're delivering upon it. You know, I think fundamentally, yeah, you know, it's, and it's, it's, it's a soapbox I stand on all the time. Fundamentally, for me, cloud is a bunch of stuff that kind of existed before. You know, virtualization existed before. You know, outsourcing existed before. The difference is, is Tying it all together and the business model, so the whole the whole subscription thing, the whole agility, the whole consumerization and democratization, and, the, and for me that's the exciting thing about cloud. So data center uh, alliance, which is the main thrust behind this event here, uh, it's kind of an industry consortium. Everyone's kind of you know rah rah, you know cheering each other, you know as they kind of jump the, through hoops and try to you know disrupt the data center. But the the data center has traditionally been a server centric mindset very infrastructure specific. Standardize the servers, take care of all this business, you know, commoditize and get standardized. Um, with cloud, it brings in the app side, which is a new dimension to IT. Sure. So no one's really kind of looking at that, and Chris was on earlier talking about apps and big data. He's got an interesting angle, perspective around pass. So talk about your view about how the application mindset is changing some of these, and I'm, I'm globalizing around servers, but most IT guys are infrastructure related. Yeah, we, I mean, you're right. The, the fact of the matter is, is that infrastructure is becoming commoditized more and more. And, and the reality is, is that as, as a market becomes commoditized, then people try and move up the value chain. And so, you know, my, um, you know, putting on my sort of crystal ball hat, um, that's a mixed metaphor, but put, put, putting on my, um, uh, looking at my crystal ball, I think that, that over time that commoditization is going to increase and people are going to move up the stack. And so we've already seen things like VMware with Cloud Foundry really moving actively into the PaaS space. Um, and, and, and at the end of the day, the, the reason for that is partly because of commoditization, but at the end of the day, we're talking about business results. Well, servers aren't a business result. You know, applications, custom applications, social applications, you know, line of business stuff, that's actually a business result. And for that reason, you know, I really, I really welcome this, this moving up the, the, the stack and the commoditization of IT because it's actually making people focus on what is important, which is delivering outcomes for business. So let's talk about, you're an analyst, you're out there, you look at the landscape, let's talk about some of the players on, on the track. You've got VMware, um, you got uh, some of the Citrix just backed out of uh, OpenStack, uh, which was uh, kind of a black eye for OpenStack, but OpenStack has then brought HP in. Um, you have all these different cloud, public cloud guys kind of jockeying, all kind of with this developer angle. Um, what's, what, it, what do you take away from that? How do you share to your customers when you talk to your clients around, I say, hey Ben, what's going on in this cloud space? They got sure. Amazon out there doing stuff. You got Rackspace. You got OpenStack. You got uh, HP, Citrix. What's happening? So, so I think make sense of that. There's really two messages. One and one is a conceptual message. One's an actual message. So, from a conceptual perspective, absolutely, the developer angle, you know, moving to pass, ab absolutely correct. In terms of, you know, when when clients come to me and say, "Hey, I just saw this this partnership announced between X and Y," you know, I say at the you know, it's very early days in this market, everyone's jockeying for position, everyone's partnering with everybody, and in a year's time, the landscape's going to look completely different. So I ask people to, you know, I, I advise people to look at the very conceptual level, look at the strategic level, and make their decisions not based on some sort of ephemeral partnership that's announced today, but, but actually... But deliverables, they have to deliver something, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay, so with, with that in mind, how are you seeing the use cases of, of cloud um, on the business side? So. Um, okay, you business cases drive cloud from some of the business model applications. What are the core use cases that you're seeing out there right now that are real good examples of cutting edge, bleeding edge, and reliable cloud deployments? So, so I guess I mean for anyone that's new to to, to the cloud, I always talk about 
the, the onion and that you should peel an onion a layer at a time. And so clearly, you know, move your move your email to the cloud, you know, move your, your enterprise collaboration to the cloud, your your office productivity, those sorts of things. In terms of what's exciting, there's some pretty exciting stuff happening at, 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 at the past level. Uh, you know, people building you know so, a lot of social apps. Um, so you've got all the organisations where they're really tying together their, their their back office, you know, CRM functionality with some sort of social facing stuff. So that stuff's pretty exciting. But I think the the big, I mean, that's that's the opportunity for today and tomorrow. The big opportunity for you know a year and ahead is, is is the whole big data thing. And I know big data. I, I hate the buzzword. Um, but for me, what what is exciting? We is, love the buzzword, by the way. Uh, you know, I, I bet you do, but, <laughs> it but, creates so much controversy. Well, it's it does, good for the media business. But what I do is I, I take a step back from that, and what's exciting to me is is drawing some insight. Yeah. And when we've got every device in the world connected, you know, points of data from 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 everywhere, then we are going to have vast, huge quantities of data. And so dr deriving some insight from that. And so last week. Um, a, a few of us went and visited the, the SuperNAPS, which, data, which is data center in, in Vegas, the biggest data center in the world. And we saw there a 50,000 um, node uh, Hadoop cluster that eBay's using to just crunch their historical data to drive some insights from it. And so that sort of stuff is really exciting, that analysis and, and providing value from, from crunching those numbers. Yeah, we have our uh, Hadoop cluster of five nodes um, next to the Cloudera cages uh, in the uh, level 43 in, in Mountain View, it's impressive. Um, big data, I mean, I when I say I love the hype, I mean, I just love that it's it's hypish, but I truly think big data is one of those things that has rapidly come to the forefront that actually is changing a lot because the role of data, and Christian and I were talking about this, the role of data now in the, in the system because it spans everything, mm. data center, data, I was talking with HP at HP Discover around using machine data, using probes and rolling that data up. Uh, social data, you got personal data. So the data revolution is really about insights in real time. So I think that that is going to change the game because that affects the storage paradigm, that affects the compute paradigm. So the ability to get, get and use data fundamentally challenges data warehouse, business intelligence, which we're operating under like really, really long SLAs. I right, give me a report. Mm. Only five weeks. Yeah. Now it has to be five days. Now it's five minutes to five seconds. Well, it does. It closes the loop, and the the, the whole move towards self-learning and continuous improvement. Uh, big data is, is is able to deliver upon that. So that's really exciting. Yeah, and and you know, for me, I'm bullish on the fact that you know, as an infrastructure geek and also a software geek, um, you know, for the first time in the history of our business world, life of the world, you can actually instrument a business end to end with data. Yeah. How you acquire your raw materials, build products, hire people, sell, service, and <laughs> do more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every aspect of the value chain for a business can be instrumented. And continuously, in time. continuously iterated. Yeah, so that's why I think you guys have a good uh, angle on this whole business outcome and Chris's, Chris's past vision. So let's talk about past for a second. So platform as a service, um, I'm always talking about the, the, the challenge between race to zero and differentiation. You know, the past market, some will say, hey, if you're going to go hoster mentality, it's a race to zero. Jam it down, one, two winners, everyone loses. Sure. Total commodity, total no margins. And then the other side, which is differentiation, which is always where the value is. Um, pretty much people agree, don't want to be a race to zero business model. Sure. They want to add value. Where are you seeing the most value add on, on platform as a service? It's, it's really interesting because it's so early, everyone's following each other. And so, you know, I mean, I remember two or three years ago when, when Chris and I started talking about pass and, and you had you know Engine Yard and you had Heroku and they were all kind of Ruby passes and, and then all of a sudden everyone's gone polyglot and everyone follows suit. And so I think we aren't at the point where people are starting to really deliver you know that that added, added value. And part of the reason for that is that in the enterprise they're still not they don't even know what pass is. Yeah. And so it is very early days. I mean I do think that the the early wins are going to come from those social things. And I know you know, I know Heroku's having a lot of success with, with Facebook applications and that sort of thing. And so I think those will be the, the, the early wins, but I'm really excited about Cloud Foundry because I think this, this move to, a, to an, open, you know, an open source product and the amount of innovation that can happen around that is, is, is pretty exciting. Do you see the different approaches on that front? This is kind of just a tangent question on that. Um, there's two philosophies, purpose-built, solution-built, pass, or more general purpose. Mm. I mean, it comes back down to 
in a way, Oracle kind of model versus, you know, I want to build the best pass for this app, mm. this use case, or more general purpose. Well, I think Cloud Foundry <laughs> seems to be more general purpose. I, I think um, what's going to happen is we're going to see the, the, the rise of the, of the um, you know, custom built passes. Also the ability to, to modularize uh, your particular pass to your particular workload. So I think what we'll see, and, and probably built on top of, of Cloud Foundry, is a situation where you know, I'm an app developer, I'm doing you know, this kind of application, this kind of workload, this kind of you know, geographic spread or whatever, and I'll sort of plug and play different modules. And I think that, that is, is where the, the exciting developments will come going forward. Question for you around just more industry kind of inside baseball, observational kind of uh, views from you about um, obviously, you know, the data center, IT, they're slow, right? I mean, it's always been, as I was saying at the HP event was, you know, you know, can you speed up the dial a little bit? I mean, it's just, just like tortoises and the hare, right? The app market is going crazy. Everyone's running as fast as they can, big data, all that stuff. IT's still slow as hell. Um, what do you think about the speed game on IT? And in particular, have you seen open source play a role in that? Because now, he, even at this event, I'm seeing Cloudera here trying to be more IT-ish mm. on the Hadoop side. So you're seeing some patterns here emerge, right? People have to make money. Yeah, right? a, so a, a little. But I, what I would say is that um, you know, I, I've, I've, I've written some some papers for some some management pa management papers I did years and years ago, and talked about sort of the the new look enterprise and the organic enterprise and the, the death of big corporates. And I think it, it really comes to it down to a point where very soon we're going to get to a point where it's innovate or die. And so at the moment, you know, at the end of the day, enterprise can be a blocker, can be a barrier to, to, to innovation, and they can use a, a bunch of different metrics to justify their blocking. Um, but that's, that has to stop soon. And so I think we're going to see over the next few years, we are going to see... Adapt know, or die, basically, right? Innovate or die. Absolutely. Because you can block all you want, that's what you want to do. But, but eventually your competitors are going to, you know, whoever flinches first is, is, is going to win. And so I think we're going to see some flinching happening. And already, you know, I spent yesterday, um, spent a bit of time with a financial services company um, here in New York talking about the use of cloud. And I was just talking to them about, you know, the concerns, you know, the compliance, yep. the, the, the risk aversion, and they're all in because they realize that in terms of delivering outcomes, in terms of you know, speed to market, in terms of uh, you know, they're doing sort of big data analysis, in terms of getting that out there quickly. Yeah. I'd love to talk to you about some of the compliance bottlenecks, but we'll do that for another, another conversation. Um, the conversation I want to talk now, as we talked last night, and Chris and I talked about earlier, agile, agile the word agile, agility. Uh, kind of kicked around the developer community, you know, agile programming basically means do things very effective in teams, et cetera, et cetera. But with the, some of the things we talked about, the business outcomes you mentioned, um, the business drivers seem to be so much more in, in play now with IT. It used to be IT was this big resource, mm -hmm. it had some infrastructure, management would give them budget, yeah, we'd lob some requests in, the no team would say yes, maybe here and once in a while, it would get done, a little slow, but now with real-time analytics and big data, the pressure at the seed level saying, hey, we need to innovate or die, is putting pressure on IT. How is that changing? Do you see a lot more of that in your conversations in the field, in the trenches? How big is that? How real is that conversation? And what types of conversations? I, I absolutely do, and I think um, the, the main way we're seeing that is, is, is through shadow IT or rogue IT. And I, I actually don't have a, a huge is issue with shadow IT because I fundamentally believe that, that um, developers are responsible people, they're professional, and, they're, and you know, generally they're going to do the right thing. And I think, you know, I, I've been involved in a, a, in a bunch of different startups and a bunch of different projects, and I've seen big corporate IT for development, you know, projects, and I've seen, you know, an agile approach to, to development projects, and it, it never ceases to amaze me just how slow big corporate IT is. So, uh, you know, IT has itself to blame, and yes, I know they're, you know, they hold the keys to the castle, and I know there's compliance issues, and I know all that stuff, but fundamentally, you know, I liken it to the conversation around social enterprise. And so corporates are really scared about giving social tools to their workers because what if they say something? What if they quote something outside in the outside world? And you know, at the end of the day, you pay your employees good money. You spend money training them. Yep. You know, you've got to trust them. Your yeah. bottom line has to be that your people will do the right thing. So don't mm. don't block innovation. Same rules apply when you, they go to cocktail parties, right? If they spill the beans on corporate secrets, they get fired. Right? Absolutely. So yeah. I think I, th I think IT judgment. IT needs to trust yeah. their, their developers. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the DevOps movement? Um, obviously, um, Node.js is hot. We covered that event at Silicon Angle. 
um, the developer role within the ecosystem of IT is relevant. But you know, Chris was saying, you know, constantly and controversially, he says, you know, it's, it's BS because PaaS will abstract away the ops, which makes total sense. But uh, you know, relative to the developer world, what Spring Source has shown with VMware is that, hey, we need to have these kind of frameworks and these new OSs, however they're defined. And yeah. developers need more headroom for programming. I need to do more server stuff. I need to more I need to do more than just front end work. Th there's a lot of passion around the DevOps no ops discussion, and to be honest, it's a discussion I try and avoid because I think this is all changing, and, and the roles are changing. And you know, fundamentally, there is still going to be a degree of operations, whether you call that DevOps or whether you call it or call it no apps. No ops. Yes, there's going to be a requirement to to architect applications. You know, so the developers will be much more an intrinsic part of, of of delivering applications. I believe yes, PaaS will abstract away a lot of that operational stuff, but there's still going to be a degree. Yeah, of Yeah, I think I would agree with you. I mean, we follow DevOps. In fact, we have a, a section called DevOps Angle, but basically it's turning into big data angle because all those DevOps are more hyperscale hyperscale questions or if they're in the cloud, it has to do with cloud conversations where the developer is a stakeholder. Sure. So I think your point about shadow IT is a great indicator that cloud is formalizing shadow IT, right? I mean, basically, Absolutely, right? it's allowing people to do <laughs> yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay, you've been doing shadow IT, either do shadow IT and have compliance risk, or create a vehicle to scale speed-wise. Well, and the other thing you, what you do saying? is you allow shadow IT to happen, but you, you put some stuff in place so there's some visibility, you know, some cost visibility, you know, those sorts of things you put in place, but you still let people do the things. Yeah. You know, compliance, visibility, those sorts of things. Uh, ben, final question before we uh, end the conversation. Two, two points I'd like you to share with the audience. Uh, one is what you're thinking about this next 12 months. What are you going to be looking at? What are you going to be covering? Some of the things that you, that's top of mind for you that you're going to be uh, scouring the marketplace, investigating and, and kicking the tires on. And two, um, what you share uh, with folks, uh, customers and, and prospective, uh, enterprise clients and buyers, what the landscape's like. Sure, so in terms of what I'm looking for, um, I, you know, I've been heartened, uh, you know, as I said, I met with this financial um, company in here in New York this week and really heartened by that. Um, I spent some time talking with a, uh, a mining company I in Australia uh, a little while ago and, and they're both using cloud. So I'm really heartened by seeing some traditional risk averse industries go to cloud. So I'm looking for more of that and I'm, I'm, I'm keen to see those case studies. In terms of what I'm telling people, you know, I, I, I guess I see two distinct classes of, of, of organisation. I, I see the, the, the early adopters that are in boots and all, and then I see the, the more risk averse ones. The risk averse ones, it's a lot of hand holding, it's a lot of it's okay, one step at a time, you know, take yeah, it easy. Cross the bridge slowly. Yeah, with the, but with the early adopters, it's very much about um, sort of envisaging, you know, what the future looks like, and that's a, that's a convergence, um, big data, analysis, mobile, all these things in a big melting pot. And when you start sort of drawing some pictures for people to what their organization might look like in two or three years, pretty clearly out of the bottom of that drops a, a technology uh, you know, direction. Ben, thanks for the conversation with uh, diversity analysis. Thanks awesome. for coming by and sharing your perspective on SiliconANGLE's CUBE conversations. We'll be right Thank back you. with our next guest. <laughs>